All right, what is up YouTube? Today, I wanna to talk about a little uh, video I just watched or a little topic that I, on the video that I just watched, which is by MCO40. And he stated that there are people willing, I mean, uh, they're saying that they're gonna quit the game because of Zodiacs. And I just find that ridiculous. Now, as he said in the video, there's a lot of ways to counter Zodiacs. And pretty much once you get rid of all their monsters, Zodiacs really can't do anything. And I agree with that statement. So I do got a couple of cards I wanna show you if you so if you're thinking about quitting here wait check this video out look at these cards put them in your deck and if that doesn't help you then go 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 sit go sit down for three months and wait for the next deck to come out but i just find that completely dumb to quit over zodiacs now if you quit over the pendulum mechanic or when pendulums first got announced or something like that or pepe or something sure i agree with you go sit down for three months or until something happens to pepe because Pepe was just ridiculous. That shit was this. That was debilitating to play against. I remember I was in the regional, doing pretty good. I think I was either two, two or three zero. One of the two. I, I was I was doing pretty good. I was all right. I was like, "Fuck it, you know, zombies is finna make it." So I pair up against Pepe. First game destroys me. Second game I deck David him. We're doing good. Third game he doesn't open up a broken hand. He just opens up something. You know he could play cards, but he can't do anything. So. I go, I, I activate something, I think it was a Unizombie or something, he maxes me. Fine, I don't care. So I stop, he goes, bam, doesn't do nothing. So it gets about the third or fourth turn, he sets his scales, I Icarus attack, okay, my turn with Swallow Slash, bam, my turn, I don't have anything. So, uh, I don't know if I summon an attacker, I don't know, it was fucking last year, so, damn. So he goes, draws Monkey Board, ends up beating me because I, th that... That's how just powerful the deck was. They had three of those motherfuckers. They had three jokers. They had three fucking, I mean, plush fires, uh, damage jugglers, all this shit they had. And that was literally debilitating to play against because once they went off, they put up a board where you literally can't play through. So that right there, I can understand quitting. Dragon rulers and fucking spell books, I can understand because back then we didn't have all the cards we do have now so there weren't easy just summon a kaiju and get over everything you had to literally fight through everything i think dark hole was still at one regeki was still banned i i believe i don't know so well, at least i don't remember um that's 2013 so it's probably all those cards that was you know still banned in that one but heavy storm was legal vanity's emptiness was legal but once that deck went off you're not coming back like they literally put boards up where you once you get done fighting you don't exhaust all your resources all their resources is in a grave so they could just continue and just smash your face in so i can understand quitting for that i don't even want to talk about spell books that was just ridiculous but those i can easily see why you know <clears throat> i can easily see why you would quit for those reasons but zodiacs out of all the decks that have came through and gone through you you Y'all decide that Zodiacs is a fucking problem. Y'all can't deal with a damn Degussie Emerald in a card that destroys something. Like, come on now. Like, I would gladly play this. If you had, if you gave me a choice to play against any other deck in history, any of the most powerful decks or the best decks of the format, I'm going to pick this because this is, this is the easiest to counter. It's the easiest to play against. It's the easiest to counter. Now, there are some builds that go into Naturia Beast, but those are going to be few and far between because... A lot of people just like consistency over combo wombo decks. Now that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is. The most consistent decks, or the you know the the the, the best consistent deck, is just gonna just gonna do good. That's why you know a lot of people, a lot of Metal Force players, you know, cut Gofu because they want the consistency over just trying to you know bring out a good board. So, <clears throat> anyways, let's get into why um, you you shouldn't quit over Zodiacs, and if you are gonna quit. Use some of these cards, they'll help you out tremendously. So, any kaiju in Lava Golem, like I said, deals with any problem you have on their board. So, preferably, you would, you would want to use a kaiju um, because you can still conduct your normal summon and stuff. But depending on what deck you're playing, Lava Golem, you know, it pretty much does the same thing, but more. Because if you if your deck is already special summon, you don't require a normal summon. Use Lava Golem, get rid of two cards. And at at worst, you know they take your they, uh, what's the name? At worst, if you can't get rid of the lava golem, they're gonna get burned for a thousand, and you may take three thousand, but that's fine. Then rather dealing with the cards that are such a problem, which you know that like I said, their best the best boards in zodiacs 
pretty much end with the Augusta Emerald and the Drantia in probably an Invoker or the Coach High Trainer, um, Drantia and an Invoker. But like I said, those are not like mind boggling. It's not double infinity. It's not fucking uh, Hope, you know, Hope, Hope, what is this shit? Uh, Hope Harbinger or whatever his name is. It's not 500 cards that negates everything that says you can't play. It's literally, they're just going to build card advantage and then end their turn. And then after you get rid of that, they can't do anything else. So, like I said, any Kaiju, Lava Golem, it'll help you out tremendously. Also, let's go to some of the summons. Flying Seed can completely stop him in the tracks, but you got to be careful because they do, if they do have the spell card, then you know, they're going to just pop this. But, like I said, they have to get rid of this. And if they don't have the spell card, if they're like normal summon Momorat, you're pretty sure they don't have the spell card. Or, you know, they just want a normal summon Momorat. But, like I said, that's bad play. You'll use a spell card, bam. Summon Flying Seed, they have to end their turn. Fossil Dina, once again, a good, very, very good card. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen this in Jeff Jones' build. Not build, but in his deck, because he uh, won over the weekend, I think, at ARG. And, he, you know, he uses, which is a good card. So if you're going first, you can normal summon, set your back row. They can't attack over it. I mean, you got back row, so you can defend your Fossil Dina and just end up beating them. And if it does survive one turn and switch it to defense, and they only have pretty much, I think they only have one Zodiac that gets over it as a normal summon, which is a 1600 one. So after that, they can't literally do nothing. You can just play your deck or you can turn this back to attack and keep attacking. Um, <clears throat> or if you're going second, just set it because Drancia does not pop face downs. So it only pops face ups. So they have to attack into it. Flip, bam, pop their whole board. Once again, once you once you get rid of their monsters on board, they can't do anything else. So there you go. Fossil Line is a very good card. Definitely pick these up. These are only around a dollar or two dollars right now. This card will go up once people really start playing it. Um, another card I want to talk about is Ghost Ogre. Now these are hand trapped. This card right here is is I think maybe go up. It might go up depending on what happens. But I think this card is really going to be used a lot in this format because this does stop a lot of the decks that are coming out, uh, such as uh, not coming out but are going to be played. DDDs are uh, are listen. They just won. Yeah, Jeff Jones just won with DDDs. Ghost Ogre is a good counter against their deck because you can stop the spell card. You're pretty golden. You can stop them from doing, you know, spitting all over your face and destroying you. You can you can do it on the pendulums. You can also do it for metal foes. You can do it for ABCs. This card is very good and very underrated. Uh, mass destruction cards. Lightning Vortex, Dark Hole, Regaki, uh, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Any of these cards, pretty much, once again, like I said, once you wipe their board, they can't do anything. Imco 40 touched on that too. Once you wipe their board, they can't do anything. Zodiacs are a very good engine, but they're not a very... They, they can't really come back unless they unless it's just unless they just have like the perfect hand or they just refill everything back in the deck. They can't really come back after that. Even if they do refill, like I said, the best thing they're gonna do is Emerald or the Invoker, and that's not scary. Um, also, Boogie Eclipse and Book of Moon. Uh, like I said, just once again, Book of Moon the right target, or just Boogie Eclipse their whole board and attack over everything. That's fine. You know, it's not really a problem. This, you know, handles the Drantia. It handles all the problems that, you know, you, I mean, pretty much Drantia is the only problem with Zodiacs is because they can go into a Drantia. Just Book of the Eclipse or Book of Moon Drantia, do all your plays, end up winning, beating your opponent because they can't really stop you on your turn. <clears throat> Another card which is good, or well, these three cards that are good are just effect negators. So, Forbidden Chalice, um... Is a fairly standard card. I would say it's the weakest out of these three, though. But if you don't got these two cards, you just play this. This is one. It, it's a good card. You can negate anything on your turn, on your opponent's turn. That's what gives you the added benefit over these two. Is that you can just negate on your turn when you draw this card. These two have to. Be, this has to be on your opponent's turn, and this pretty much has to be set. So, like I said, another on your opponent's turn, which sucks. But you know, if you don't have time to wait for your opponent. I mean, wait for you, wait a whole turn. Use this Forbidden Chalice. You're going to be golden. Negate their Drancia. Negate their fucking, I don't know. I don't even know. If you playing against, uh, you playing against DDDs, negate their Crystal Wing. Negate their cards that negate spells. A activate this. Give them the 400 boost. Doesn't matter. You're just negating the effect. Breakthrough Skill, which is just like Ghost Ogre, I really think this card is really going to be played because... It gives you that added bonus factor of negating pretty much two cards. So, bam, on your opponent's turn, you can negate one of the Zodiacs. 
Um, and then on your turn, you can negate the drain shit that they're going to go into. So then you're golden and you get a pretty much a two for one breakthrough skill. And once again, like I said, even against DDDs, against fusion, uh, what's the name? Fu all, all the decks that are coming out in fusion enforcer, this card is just going to be good. Effect negation is going to be good, period, because if fusion enforcers, you're, you're getting fluffles. And that's going to be a nightmare to deal with. You're going to need effect negation. Fiendish Chain may be a good card to pick up because it does stop attacks. So you probably want to do that because Fluffles, they do build a lot of attack. So Fiendish Chain also can be thrown in this, which is a very good card that nobody's picking up right now. So yeah, you can pick up some Fiendish Chains. That may be good. That's if Fluffles become like the be-all, end-all deck. Or if they don't become that, pick these up. These are like 30 cents, so... That's easy. Uh, effect Veiler. Um, if you if you had a choice, if I had a choice between Ghost Ogre and Effect Veiler, I would pick Ghost Ogre because there's more utilized for every card, and this is only monsters. But Effect Veiler is good. So if you do want to play this, or if your deck tutors to it, or whatever the case may be, if you just like the artwork or something, this card is still good. You can negate you know monster effects, so that's pretty good. So yeah, these are 13 cards, and these not even all the cards that you can use to negate. Uh, not negate, but you can use against Zodiac. So there's no reason to quit because of Zodiacs. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, they're not the most powerful deck to ever exist. Consistent, yes. Card advantage, yes. Are they annoying to play against? Hell yes. But they're not game breaking. They you can still play on your turn. It's not they can only pop one card. That's the best thing that they're gonna do. If you're dealing with traps. Every, every deck pretty much runs traps, so that's not even... We're not going to count back row as a factor in Zodiacs. It's literally their monster. Drancy only pops once on your turn. So, like I said, they're not really hard to deal with. And once you get over the, their field, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, let's see how long that was. That was 12 minutes, Jesus Christ. All right, so let's hurry up and talk about this card, which I really think has potential. Now... <clears throat> I was looking at this card the other day because once again, I just looked through my comments, not my comments, but I just looked through my cards and see, you know, what else can I find to use? I stumbled across this and I said, hmm, can this be use, useful in the Zodiac format? And the answer is yes. Yes, it can. If you're playing Zodiac, this right here opens you up to four fucking Momorats. That is just ridiculous because you can just get their Momorat and just do all your fucking plays, which is that's not four more rats, but you can get all three of yours on the field. So that's just crazy. Um, <clears throat> if you want to go for game, your opponent has a strong monster in the graveyard. You could, you know, Wiseman Chalice, bring it back out, use that for extra attack. But um, you gotta, you know, you gotta control no monsters. So, oh yeah, Let, let's read the effect. If you control no monsters, select one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Special summon it. It cannot be treated, cannot be tributed or used as synchro material. During the end phase, give it back to your opponent. So, what you pretty much want to use this for is XYZ or use it as a fusion. And that's, you know, it's not really hard to do. There's a lot of deck, like if you're playing Metal Foes, you could use it for a fusion, for your Metal Foes fusion. If you're playing an Exceed deck where everybody pretty much has Exceeds, so just Wiseman Chalice, like if you're playing DDDs, get a level 8 from their graveyard. Or if you're playing a Mirror Match in DDDs, get one of their fucking DDDs, uh, Exceed over it. Or a fucking, uh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much use it as a fusion, anything. But, <clears throat> yeah, so this card I really think has potential. Um, so you, you guys let me know what you think of the video in general. What do you think of Wiseman Challenge? Do you think it does have a little potential to do something good? Or do you think, you know, eh, it's just not good because, I mean, this card did come out in Duelist Revolution. And it still hasn't done nothing. Which, uh, it's very surprising, but I really think that now is the time that you can probably use this card. And it'll probably be good, because you can just reborn a fucking kaiju and just destroy your opponent. Um, you can get a level 4 and X, XYZ, you can get a level 6 and XYZ, I don't know what you plan, you can use fusions and stuff. But yeah, I really think this card is going to be good. So yeah, that is the end of the video. Uh, once again, for you guys, don't quit because of Zodiacs, they're just not, they're not, they're not... I wouldn't say they're not worthy of you quitting because they're really not that powerful of a deck, as in like pow like as in strong wise. They're consistent and they're very easy to play, and you know they do build card advantage, but they're not powerful. They're they're just I wouldn't quit over this. My personal opinion: if you're going to quit, I should no just 
If you if you're not gonna play competitive, sure, just but don't quit. There's no reason to quit over Zodiacs. They're just not that not that fucking powerful to quit over. So yeah, that is the end of the video. Try to keep it low, but you know I I don't know how to do any of that. If you watched any of my previous videos, I, they're always long. So yeah, that is it for today. Let me know what you guys think of uh what i said or these cards or anything like that definitely give me a feedback on this i do want to know it also definitely give me a feedback on these cards um let me know if there's any cards that you are particularly putting in your deck to counter against zodiacs and stuff like that i would like to know you know help me out and i'm trying to help you out so yeah that is it for today like the video if you enjoyed it leave a comment let me know what you think about these cards and what do you think that you know that do you believe that zodiacs are worth quitting over give me your opinion let me know about that and also subscribe if you have not upload a minimum of three videos a week so um yeah this this one you're getting extra i am going to upload at one o'clock again and i'm going to be playing some fire fist because idk32 sent me a list and we're going to play that and we're going to see how that goes uh so yeah you guys get a minimum of three videos a week so you guys have something to look forward to and also if you guys can Click the ad to help support the channel, which will be very appreciative, and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you, and I'll see you guys at 1 o'clock.